till we count goods and services. This is very important concept to understand. To avoid any kind of double counting, what we need to make sure that the product that we are adding is added only once. So, there is a single addition of the product. So, let's take an example. The farmer supplies the wheat to the flour mill at the rate of rupees 8 per kg. The flour mill grinds the wheat and provides to the biscuit factory at the rate of rupees 10 per kg. And this biscuit factory uses the flour, sugar, etc. to make biscuits and finally provides these packed biscuits at the rate of rupees 30 per packet. What does this mean? This means wheat is added as an ingredient in all the four steps. Now let us talk about GDP. What is GDP? You already studied about this GDP in our first chapter. GDP is the final value of all goods and services produced within a country during a particular year. Look at the slide. The value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year provides the total production of the sector for that year. And sum of the production in three sectors gives GDP of the country. It is the value of all final goods and services produced within the country during a particular year. And this GDP shows how big the economy is. Historical change in the sectors. There are three stages. Initial stage, second stage and third stage. At the initial stage, after observing the changes, that have come in the development patterns of the sectors, it has been found that in the initial stages of the development, the primary sector was the most important sector of the economic activity. As the methods of farming changed and agricultural sector began to prosper, it would produced much more food than before and many people could take up many other activities which led to the increase in the number of activities. However, at this stage, most of the goods produced were natural products from the primary sector. Hence, most people were employed in this sector. In short, in this initial stage, the most of the production came from the agricultural sector and the employment opportunities also came from this agricultural sector. India is predominantly an agricultural land. So most of the people are employed in agricultural sector. Over a long time and especially because of the new methods of manufacturing were introduced, factories came up and started expanding. In this stage, people began to work in factories in large numbers and also started using factory goods in large numbers as they were cheap. Secondary sector gradually became the most important sector in terms of total production and employment. In the past hundred years, there has been further shift from secondary sector to tertiary sector. In this third stage, the service sector has become the most important sector in terms of total production and employment.